Hello, hello, welcome to the video. Now, I remember briefly mentioning that a video by the YouTube channel Brightside in my T Rex vs. Spinosaurus video, and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna record my own reaction to it because I haven't actually watched the full video myself. I think I might have watched it the other day, but that's about it. So, uh, let's start. It was a 40 feet long and 12 feet tall beast, a king of dinosaurs. It's massive and muscular body weighed up to eight ton. That's a megalodon tooth. Its, it's serrated teeth were sharp, and its jaws had a bite so strong they could crush a car. The creature had two powerful legs. It lived in forested river valleys all across North America. Uh, it actually lived from 66 to 60. No, 66 to 68 million years ago. So you're about two million years off here. Not just that, but I just want to point out, uh, I know this is pretty much just the Jurassic Park design, but pronated hands and no lips. It lived in forested river valleys all across North America, almost 70 million years ago. I'm talking about the most famous movie star among dinosaurs, T-Rex. If you look up in the top right hand corner, you'll notice they spoke to it as t Dash Rex. If I remember correctly, it's meant to be T full stop Rex. It was very smart, with a brain twice as big as that of any large meat eating dino. It was slower than other hunters, developing a speed of up to 12 miles per hour. Its other weakness was its small arms. Some scientists think they were just an evolutionary leftover, like the pelvic bones of some snakes. But others believe T Rex used its. It won't use its arms for that, by the way. Arms to hunt. Its four-inch claws helped the animal out. T-Rex was undoubtedly frightening, but surprisingly, there were even scarier dinosaurs in the past. Around 100 million years ago, there was a giant creature with the name. They misspelled Spinosaurus. Name that meant a spine lizard. It was Spinosaurus, the largest carnivorous dino. It Since when was Spinosaurus bloody Godzilla? I mean, this this is not to scale at all. Was bigger than T Rex and could grow almost sixty feet long. Wrong. Its weight could be as great as twenty two tons. Also wrong. The animal had long spines on its back. They could grow up to seven feet long and were connected by folds of skin. They this design went outdated like by twenty fourteen. Some scientists think it was a hump Spinosaurus used to store water. This dino had dense bones and short hind limbs. I'm just gonna skip. I'm just gonna skip this. I'm sick of Spinosaurus. Giganotosaurus. Giganotosaurus. Which is the Greek word for. This way of spelling it with um one, well you're missing an O. Uh, but this way of spelling it as Gigantosaurus. That's actually the name of I believe a now invalid sauropod. Giant southern lizard was considered the largest meat-eating dino until Spinosaurus was found. It lived around 100 million years ago in South America, around 30 million years before T. rex appeared there. Tyrannosaurus rex never lived in uh, South America. As far as I know, all Tyrannosaurids, including T. rex, were limited to Asia and North America. That's about it. As far as I know, there's not a single Tyrannosaurid in South America at all. It was longer and taller, but more slender than T. rex. Yeah, so it's not the largest theropod out there. T. rex still outweighs it by a fair margin. And while T. rex had two fingers, this giant had three. It walked upright on its two big and very strong legs. Its tail was pointed and thin, which helped the creature make fast turns while running and keep its balance. The animal can move at a speed of up to 31 miles per hour. T. rex's maximum speed was 25 miles per hour. As far as I know, both of these speed numbers are um, invalid. From what, if I remember correctly, in one book I have, they state Giga could, or well, a seven-ton Giganosaurus could only reach a speed of 33.4 kilometers an hour. So that's nearly 17 kilometers slower than what they're stating here. And there's no way T-Rex could reach 25 miles per hour unless you're talking a juvenile. Per hour at the most. Any faster than that? and the giant could lose its balance and fall over. Giganotosaurus had two arms with sharp claws. It was mostly an opportunistic meat-eater feeding on everything it found on its way. 
Its bite wasn't as strong as T-Rex's, but it still managed to deal with some bigger animals, like herbivore dinosaurs. Maybe there was even an Argantinosaurus among them, the biggest animals ever found. It's, it's pronounced Argentinosaurus. Also, as far as I know, this head shape is wrong. Argentinosaurus is what's known as a Macronarian sauropod. Uh, if I remember correctly, Macronarian translates to big-nosed. So in other words, the head of Argentinosaurus should be more rounded. I'll show something up on screen showing what I mean by that. This is more like they have a plot could what they're showing here. It's hard to imagine how Giganotosaurus could take down a 50 ton beast on its own. This is actually a myth. The two dinosaurs never lived together at all. It was actually its close cousin Mapusaurus that lived with Argentinosaurus. That's why scientists think they may have hunted in groups. The animal's only weakness was its small brain. It was twice smaller than T-Rex's. This means the T could at least win a chess game. Big retractable sickle-shaped claws in the creature's feet are great for cutting. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Utah Raptor. That's a mini T-Rex that lived 125 million years ago. If a big T-Rex was coming for you, you could hide under a rock or some other place where it wouldn't be able to reach you. But there is no place where its mini version couldn't follow you. Discovered in Utah, strong, toothy, and armored with huge claws more than 9 inches long. An adult Utah Raptor was 20 feet long and 5 feet tall at the hip. From what I know, that's a bit oversized. They were actually closer to like 4 or 5 meters long. Which is, if I remember correctly, a King Cobra could get to 5.6. Also, um, this design, as far as I know, the feathers, they should be running all the way down its third finger. And they should be much longer and straight. And there should also be feathers on the legs the lower parts of the body, and there should be this more so fan of tails, I mean tail feathers, on the tail. These creatures were covered in feathers. This is why fully grown animals look like gigantic turkeys. The Utah Raptor's main weakness was their size. Sauropods didn't chew, they just stripped the food and swallowed it. They were a bit smaller than many other dinos, but these guys made up for that by hunting in packs. Also, they don't live with Argentinosaurus. And Utah Raptor, as far as I know, is believed to have not lived in packs. There's no very strong evidence for uh, Utah Raptor or any Dromaeosaurid hunting in packs, except for I think maybe Deinonychus. But that's about it. Lizard, in Greek, was a massive carnivore reaching 40 feet in length and weighing two tons. It roamed the. From what I know, Allosaurus could only get to about 9 meters, which I think is about 30 feet. Uh, not just that, but I believe they get that 40 foot number from, I think, maybe Saurophaganax, because Saurophaganax is sometimes often thought of as being a, uh, a larger subspecies of Allosaurus. The Earth around 150 million years ago. Similar to T Rex, this dino had strong back legs and a large snout. Its mouth was full of sharp teeth. The animal easily lost them when eating. But Hang on. That's another shark tooth. Why am I even surprised at this point? They lost them when eating, but they usually grew back. Allosaurus was already fully grown by the age of 15, and its lifespan was around 28 years. The creature had a short neck and a long, narrow skull. Disproportionately big compared to the rest of its body. This dino also had a pair of horns above its eyes and ridges along the top of its nasal bones leading to the- What's with the tape measure? It's not even listing a bloody length or anything. ...was horns. Allosaurus chased big herbivore dinosaurs. When several Allosauruses gathered in a group, they could take down even such colossal creatures as Apatosaurus. But Apatosaurus? Also, the feet of sauropods is completely wrong here. They should be more like fleshy columns, not whatever this is. Scientists still doubt if they could cooperate, because these dinos were generally not too friendly toward one another. Some of the animal's bones had an hourglass shape, which made them lighter and reduced their strength. They were what? similar to the hollow bones modern birds have. Another weakness of this dino was its bite. It was less powerful than... If I see more shark teeth, I'm gonna scream. ...that of some modern animals, like lions, alligators, or leopards. Scientists think Allosaurus may have used its skull as a... 
This theory has been disproven. I talked about it in my Soro Faganax video, if I remember correctly. So uh, go check that out, I guess. Erizine. What? Erizinosaurus. It's Ferrazinosaurus. It's one of the freakiest dinos out there. It lived 100 to 60 million years ago. It had a very small head and bizarre feet with four toes, unlike their ancestors that had three. Then why don't you have it with four toes? Th there's only three visible, unless that little shadowy bit there is meant to be the fourth toe hidden away. Its body was covered with feathers. This weirdo had the longest claws scientists have ever recorded. They were three feet long each. These claws were curved and sharp. The dino used them to collect plants for lunch. Scientists are still not sure if this creature was a herbivore or carnivore, or, or both. As far as I know, it was a herbivore. The dino had a long neck. There were no teeth in its upper jaw. Its wrist bones were like the ones modern birds have. The Rizinosaurus might have evolved from a meat-eating to plant-eating animal throughout time. Unfortunately, in comparison with meat eaters, herbivore dinosaurs were much weaker. And much weaker? Um, there are numerous herbivore dinosaurs that would very much disagree with you. Most of them are sauropods, but there's also ceratopsians, ankylosaurids, and even hadrosaurs were still pretty powerful dinosaurs. And still, those claws can make its enemies think twice. High-spined lizard. Or a Crocanthosaurus lived a Crocanthosaurus. 10 million years ago. It was two feet shorter than T Rex, but had a similar body structure. Two feet shorter than T Rex, yet you show it at like what? Only a third or two thirds the size of T Rex? Did anyone even check this video, fact checked it at all? Like T Rexes, these creatures often went after bigger and more challenging animals. For example, with those backbones so hard, it seemed as if they were carrying a giant turtle shell, like Ankylosaur. The what? high spined lizard was very territorial. It had a brain shaped like the letter S and an excellent sense of smell. What made a Crocanthosaurus vulnerable was its small arms. I've never heard about the S shaped brain thing with that Crocanthosaurus. And as far as I know, it didn't have these osteoderms like a Ankylosaurus, they called it. Um. But the arms wouldn't have been much of a weakness. As far as well, one thing I forgot to include in my Acrocanthosaurus video is that they believe that there would have been a large amount of cartilage at the joints of the arms. Because if I remember correctly, the uh, arms don't really fit together well. They don't connect together really. So they believe there would have been a large amount of cartilage, meaning they would have been fairly flexible. So it's believed that they might have been actually used for something in life. Possibly hunting. So, they're not useless, like what most people say about most meat-eating dinosaurs, mainly T-Rex. And still, the creature used them to hunt other animals surprisingly well. The dino pulled its catch close to its torso, which was like a hug you wouldn't be able to escape from. Diplodocus lived 150 million years ago. The 90-foot-long creature was possibly the longest dinosaur ever. Its tail, which could reach 46 feet in length, was the longest tail of any animal ever. And its neck tail had two rows of bones, which made the creature even stronger and more mobile. Two rows of bones? What? Confusion 100. Diplodocus didn't look scary. Long-necked, gentle, peacefully munching on plants, until it used its tail like a whip, making even the scariest meat eaters back away. From what I know, there are some problems with the idea of it using its tail as a whip, with some people believing that if it did actually use its tail as a whip, there's a high chance that the velocity that it would generate would actually break those bones. So, um, I wouldn't really just say, oh, whip, whip, that sounds cool, that's how it defends itself. It had a humongous size to defend itself. They were like the whales of the land. They just had their size to defend themselves. That was it. This tail was the center of the dino's mass, which was why Diplodocus could move very quickly. What? 
Hang on, you mean to say it like kangaroo hops away? Which was why Diplodocus could move very quickly. Did it just hop? Elephants, rhinos, hippos can't jump. But you mean to tell me a 20 ton dinosaur can? Not just that, but as far as I know, one study found that the blaze center of mass was more so around here, close to the hips. the dino's mass, which is why Diplodocus could move very quickly. Scientists first thought, this is a lizard-like animal, but its posture was more like that of an elephant. Plus Diplodocus had nasal... Again, so robots don't chew. The dino's weakness was its small teeth and weak force bite. That's because it was designed to... Why would a sauropod use its mouth to fight off T-Rex? Oh my god. Admittedly, they kind of show that prehistoric planet with the blade bite. If I'm clearly one dreadnoughtus bites the other in the fight scene between two male dreadnoughtuses. But I doubt they would actually use their mouth against the predator because that's a crucial part of their overall body. So why'd they put one of the most important parts of their bodies in a direct danger of being bitten off by a predator? Quetzalcoatlus was the biggest flying animal ever. It lived 70 million years ago and controlled the skies of North America. It was a toothy, pin-headed creature with a blunt snout. Toothy, pin-headed creature? Why is there no teeth then? I'm pretty sure not even prehistoric planets portray with this animal showed it with teeth. I could be wrong. And also, one thing I do just want to point out, this is eight dinosaurs that could kill T-Rex. Quetzalcoatlus isn't a dinosaur. It was as tall as a giraffe and weighed 550 pounds. Quetzalcoatlus had a small torso and long neck. And also, if we're going off of like body mass, and um, well, if we're going off of body mass, as far as I know, Quetzalcoatlus wasn't the largest. It was actually Hatsagopteryx. Legs. Its wings were short compared to the rest of its body, but still long enough to stretch for 40 feet. Scientists think this animal Bodden. can fly at a speed of up to 80 miles per hour and travel 400 miles in a day. This dino was weaker than, let's say, T-Rex or most other carnivores of that time, but it had powerful muscles, which helped the animal rise into the air in the blink of an eye. Right, so... What to think of this video? Um... It... It's horrible. This video was actually taken down on Brightside's channel. channel. What I'm actually watching here is one re-uploaded by a smaller YouTube channel. This video was so bad it got taken down. And if I'm going to be honest, I can see why. Really? Out of, this, out of just the dinosaurs they show here, there's only two dinosaurs here that I can see actually beating T-Rex in a fight. And that's Argentinosaurus and Tyrannosaurus itself. That's about it. Beyond that, this is just a terrible video. I mean, there's a lot of outdated information, there's a lot of inaccurate information, there's just a lot of rubbish in this video. Really, if this if this was actually um oh, hang on. Look what someone pointed out in the comments. Giganosaurus was considered the largest meat-eating dino until Spinosaurus was found. If I remember correctly, Spinosaurus was discovered in 1912, and Giga in the 90s. That is correct, Tyranno Maximus. That is correct. There's a lot of stuff wrong with this video. If you were to ask me which one would I say is worse, this video from Brightside, or the video I covered from Wild Sciences. I'd actually say this one is much worse, at least with Wild Sciences videos, with the Wild Sciences video. He had three dinosaurs on there that could beat T-Rex. Here, really the only dinosaur besides T-Rex I see actually beating T-Rex is Argentinosaurus. But besides that, none of these at all. And Quetzalcoatlus shouldn't even be on the list. 
at least Wild Sciences made sure to actually include dinosaurs on the list of six dinosaurs that could beat T-Rex. I'm just thinking right now what exactly else is this is wrong with this video? Uh, oh yeah, for Mem Crowley one point, don't they hang on, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, here. Here's a dinosaur that could have beaten T-Rex in a fight. Anklosaurus. But oh no, no, we won't mention that. We won't, we won't, no. Not just that, but I think early on they state with Argentinosaurus that weighed 50 tons. Saurus among them, the biggest animals ever found. It's hard to imagine how Giganotosaurus could take down a 50 ton beast on its own. Yep. Um, Argentinosaurus, according to one book I have, the uh, only known specimen of Argentinosaurus is actually believed to have been about 75 metric tons. So that's 25%, no, 50% larger than what they claim Argentinosaurus weighed here. From what I know, that's actually... 50 tons is the lowest number I've seen for Argentinosaurus weight estimates. The largest I've seen was 100, though I've noticed most fall into the range of 70 to 80 metric tons. Uh, hang on, let me see if I can find anything else to... Let me see if I can find anything else. If I'm going to be honest, this design, well, it's pretty easily just... This is just copied from Jurassic Park 3. But one thing I want to point out is that don't these little spikes all over it? Doesn't this look like the Blay design from Dinosaur Train? And this is the Gigan on the source from Ark Survival Evolved. Which I'm pretty sure they even state as a completely different species. There's only one known actual species of Giganosaurus called Giganosaurus carolini, or Carolini, which I think I called it in my T-Rex video. Meanwhile, I think in Ark Survival Evolved, if you look at the dinosaur dossier, they actually listed off as Giganontosaurus sahastre. I think I think that's what they called it. So um, overall, on a ranking of uh, 1 to 10, I'd say this video is like a 2, 2 out of 10. What I'd say is this video, I'd give it a 5 out of 10, so overall not that great.